standingthegap.org for PDFs and files and all that you need. Contact me at Holding Firmly. I'll email you whatever I can. Everything I have is free. It's not copywritten. It's not trademark. There's, there's no, nothing like that. You can use it. You can download it. You can attach it to your website. Whatever you want to do. Spread that word out there. Just stand together in the faith. Why won't they repent? We've been talking about this for the last couple of videos. You know, I've seen a statement that said, Truth exists, but only falsehood has to be invented. I don't know who said that, but so true. Truth exists. Truth, faith, repentance, deeds, redemption exists. It's all this filthy rags, wretched man, substitution, alternatives, uh, imputed right righteousness. All that's been invented. All these alternatives to man doing his part has been invented. All these falsehoods. So that's the reason that the true disciples of Jesus Christ that walk in purity and obedience to his word were considered the devils by the professing system today. Just like Matthew 10 said, you know, send you out as sheep among wolves, you know, be wise as serpent and harmless as doves. You're going to be persecuted, pursued, hated. Is the church that way in America? No. That's whatsoever's loved. It's cherished. Parties. Good times. It has nothing to do with the gospel. See, throughout history, anybody that desired to live godly, to preach his word, follow Jesus, suffered persecution by evil men and imposters that grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It's like Timothy says, Second Timothy said, after he gave the condition of of men, so lovers of self and lovers of money, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, the vain amusements, all the rest of it. Liars, boasters, proud, puffed up. You've seen, you, you read them passages. See, this holds true today more than ever in the face of this faith alone that he did it for you, wretched man, uh, filthy rags, repeat after me, saved in sin gospel. I really didn't know how to summarize it otherwise because that's what we see all the time on the blogs. That's the way they're saved. That emanates from the pulpits and the airwaves in the books, in the commentaries, worldwide. Because no matter what they say, it's all underscored with this myth that there's an alternative to you obeying God. Some say, well, you can't obey. Others say, well, you're limited in your obedience. You're unwilling. Well, how can you be any more unwilling than you are unwilling to do anything else you don't want to do? No, <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous to even say so they ask us, then, when we bring this message to them, given the truth to them, supposedly saved in this mess, this wretched man mess, they ask us, then, we're like the Pharisees. But we're giving them the message to repent. They say, repent of what? What do you mean, repent? We're saved. We're, we're safe. Preacher, the preachers got them all convinced. The books, the commentary, all the pundits are on, that, on the side of... He did it for you. So, they ask, repent of what? Just like John chapter 8, verses 30-47, through 47, when Jesus dealt with the Pharisees and told them that they were sons of the devil, he said, no, we're sons of Abraham. No, if you were sons of Abraham, you'd do the deeds of Abraham, he told them in verse 39 of that chapter. The deeds of Abraham. See, the faith of Abraham is the deeds of Abraham, and James said that Abraham was saved by what he did, not by faith alone. So the pundits that say he was justified in his sin don't know what they're talking about. They are all messed up with theologies of men. So this whole thing, they argue in favor of love and tolerance and tell, call us devils when they're coming up on the side of Satan's message that you can sin and not die. But they imagine they're secure. And that they call us, the bad guys, to tell them to stop sinning and seek the mercy of God before they perish in their sins. That's the worst message you can give to these people. See, the entire premise of their gospel is in reverse. So if we look through their eyes, we can understand where they're coming from when they hear us preaching repentance and faith proven by deeds. See, they're looking through the eyes of this, you can't do it and God's got to do it for you. And we're looking through the eyes of deeds and unhindered free will and ability that man has to respond to God if he will, if he, if he chooses to do so. So that's the big divide here. 
and the reason that we'll always be accused of something by these people. It has to be that way. Because all of sin comes short of the glory of God. We're saved by grace, uh, not of faith, it's a free gift. Yeah, it's a free gift of remission of past sins. It's not permission or a covering. I know a lot of people say, well, I'm not seeing a permission. Well, it's not even a covering or some kind of imputation. There's no imputation other than the deeds proved your faith. Then faith is imputed as righteousness. Like Romans chapter 4, verses 19 through 21 explain about Abraham. Why his faith was imputed as righteousness to him. Because of the deeds and the pattern of his faith. That's why. Surely you can quote the first couple of verses of that chapter, and you got David, King David justified in his sins, and you got Abraham justified in his sins. It's another lie, it's another myth, it's another falsehood. It doesn't say that. So we're coming at these people from an entirely different wavelength, so to speak. Kind of off the dial. No, there's no frequency on their dial to pick it up. See, they never entered by the narrow gate. They never counted the cost. You know, they never took, they never took up, they never denied themselves, uh, crucified the old man. See, to them, humility is admitting that you're a depraved sinner, you're born a depraved sinner, you remain wretched to the core in the nobody's perfect world of repeat after me and profess to be a chief sinner Christian for the rest of your life. That's what they're taught constantly. They still, even the, even the Nazarene and the Wesleyan ministers that I've encountered over the years, still argue Romans 7 that that's a Christian. And none of their past pundits did. I know because I studied them all. All those guys, Wesley, Clark, Fletcher, all the famous ones, always said, no, that could not be a Christian because a Christian is not captive sold under sin. Carnal sold under sin. But they all do. And it's even written in their book. They give me a book. They say, read this and you'll see. I read it and I got it over here on my shelf, over here to my right. In the book, it's not there. And they still won't preach it. Of course, they can't preach it because they've never come through it themselves. See, the reality is that they believe these falsehoods that are invented hundreds of years ago, and they really believe that a person is saved and justified under these notions, and they have the further proof to convince themselves that God's blessing and sanctioning their actions because what further proof do they need that the big numbers and everybody agrees with them? So, they see God as blessing them in their actions and sanctioning what they do. So, you know, we come to them and we present the gospel. Okay, we present purity, faith, working by love, obedience to the truth, come clean with God. They're thinking of, I'm born in sin, saved in sin, I'm filthy rags, everything I do is wrong, and Jesus did it all for me and that's all i got to worry about. That's what they're thinking, okay? Even when you street preachers go out and preach to the people. That's what those people on drunken people and cussing and fornicating people are all thinking. So, they're so far gone into these falsehoods that they think if they're not sinning every day in thought, word, and deed, that there's no truth in them. That would be denying 1 John 1 8, right? What they believe. So their Christianity is defined in Romans 7. as carnal, sold under sin, the wretched man who never dies because he received Jesus and now his, his old man is hidden with Christ in God. God no longer sees him, but he sees Jesus. All that nonsense like Billy Graham preaches and probably all the, all the pundits that are following him as he's in his old age. See, they're called to the altars of come as you are, as we've been talking about, with a heart that's still in rebellion to God and full of guile, with no intention. No real intention of stopping those sins. Either you believe you don't have the ability, or you just don't want to. They don't come as an empty person, emptied of guile, broken, contrite, vehemently desiring to escape that corruption of sin, as we see in David in Psalm 32. Blessed is the man whose heart is free of guile, of deceit. So you don't quote that verse when they quote it from Romans chapter 4. No, they just quote, blessed is the man whose sins are covered. He goes on to say, the man who his heart is free from God, he's coming clean with God, emptying his heart of guile. See, their mercy is God saving them in their sins, then pampering them as poor helpless wretches, incapable of righteousness, purity of heart. 
and they just go about their way and their little games and their their focus groups and all their stuff that they do. It's, most of them get hardened and seared, and they're virtually impossible to reach. See, tolerance is their watchword because sin's no longer an issue with them. Only love. Telling people to forsake their vile sins and their lust and come clean with God, well, that's tearing down their confidence and discouraging them from seeking Christ. See, that's so mean. See, because no one can stop sinning and no one can put these, have any power over this, so why lay a guilt trip on them and, and you're being judgmental and unloving, making them feel so bad? Well, if they feel bad, it's because they're sinning. And if they think they can't get out of it, it's because you've convinced them otherwise, that they, didn't, they don't have the ability to do so. See, that's why we're the devilish demons, like Beelzebub, chapter, Matthew 10. We come with the message of righteousness, self-control, and judgment to come, like the book of Acts, demanding that they produce deeds worthy of repentance, because they're fully capable of doing so. That's what the book of Acts, the book of Acts didn't go into all this, well, maybe man couldn't do this. I didn't see any discussions among the apostles in the book of Acts that they thought, well, maybe if we don't tell these guys they have to produce deeds, and they can't produce deeds, we've got to tell them God's going to help them do this. And I don't see those kind of discussions, but I see it latent with everywhere now. Because everybody's, on, not everybody, but the whole system's under this lie that God's got to do it for you. See, they said under a gospel where nothing's required of them but trust in a contrived provision that's been invented in the minds of these theological teachers that have got no spiritual understanding of the scriptures. They've never repented. They're intellectuals, yeah. They're, they're highbrow intellectuals. PhDs, multiple PhDs. They don't have any understanding of the simplicity.